Hello everyone, Chris Clamp here again and welcome back to my studio. So today's topic is an interesting topic that many oil painters out there will be able to understand and relate to. This is a little bit of a controversial topic. Many people have their own beliefs and techniques of doing it, but today I'm going to tell you a little bit about my tools, what I use, and my methodology. Today, we're going to talk about sunken in oil paintings and oiling out. Let's dive in. That's right, everyone. We're going to talk about sunken in oil paintings. If you're an oil painter out there, you know what I'm talking about. You've worked so hard and so long on a painting and it looked beautiful during the process when the paint was nice and wet and juicy. And then you come back after a few days and it is sunken in. It's a little cloudy. It's gone matte. And even though that's not really that big of a problem, the problem is, is if you're still working on the painting, it's really difficult to judge values because an area that looked rich and dark now looks kind of like a mid value. And that value could be next to a value in your painting that is actually a mid value and they look very similar. It's just the sunken in quality is tricked you. This is difficult to handle when you're still working on a painting. So if you've experienced this before, you know how frustrating it could be. The reason this happens is for a variety of factors. And even though you might try to counteract many of these factors, it's bound to happen to you. A few things to keep in mind to try to prevent a painting from sinking in are the following. Make sure your painting surface is properly prepared, meaning make sure that the panel or canvas is adequately sealed and primed with gesso or whatever your priming method is, whether it's an oil painting ground or a lead ground, make sure it is properly sealed. Another thing to keep in mind is to limit your use of solvents. A lot of people will start an oil painting and take a brush and dip it in their Gamsol, turpentine, whatever the solvent is they're using, and just start tearing in at a wash. And while that is a good way to start a painting, what it does is it breaks down that initial layer of oil paint, and it makes that layer thirsty for more oil. So the layer that is underneath the layer you have just applied is actually a little thirsty because the oil has been wicked into a previous layer. So it's good to keep that in mind and limit your use of solvent. Another thing to keep in mind is to observe the fat over lean method. Now, what I just said a second ago about limiting the use of solvents is a good example of this. You want every layer you paint on top of the next layer to have more oil. So that way it's not being siphoned. It's not being wicked into the layer beneath it. It's going to stay very fat and flexible. And another thing is to be mindful of certain colors that cause this. You may have noticed that certain earth tones are more likely to become sunken in when you're using those. Once you understand that certain colors become more sunken in, you might be able to mix that color in some other way or prepare that color by mixing a little bit of oil in with it before you start using it on your palette. I've noticed that quite often a black will become very sunken in. If you're mixing your blacks, you may notice that you're less prone to this problem in your painting. Now, I thought having the conversation today about oiling out is the perfect time to tackle this on this channel because the painting I've been working on that I'm ready to pick up again is badly sunken in. 
you probably see it here behind me. It's really difficult to judge the value of the dark purple areas behind the cat figurine. I feel like the cat could possibly be finished. In my mind, it's finished, okay? But the background I know isn't there. So what I'm going to do is just oil out the background and be very careful of the cat because I know that the background needs the work and I'm going to work in that background while that layer of oil I've applied is still wet. That's a pro tip. You only want to oil out an area in which you're going to be working. Now, something to keep in mind, however, whenever you're oiling out a painting is whatever you're going to use to oil out your painting, it must be applied in a very thin application. That is because anything that's left on, if it's too thick or, or, or just there for too long, it can yellow over time. So you definitely want to be very careful with where you oil out what you're using and how thick it is and whether you're going to work into that area. You want that layer of oil to actually merge with some of the colors that you're going to be using. So my advice to you out there is have your medium that you prefer. And that is the medium that you use throughout the painting. You might use less medium in the beginning and more towards the end as you're glazing, but this is your medium. This is the thing that is going to become part of what your actual painting is that will go through all of the layers. You will also use this medium when you oil out your painting and as you finish your painting on top of or within that oiling out layer. The reason you must do this is because if you start switching out different mediums between your painting layers, you run the risk of your paint delaminating, meaning that the paint layers actually are not adhering to one another. Now, I've heard many people discuss what their oiling out recipe is. And some people use a one part solvent to a one part thing such as Galkid, and they'll apply that and then work back on top of it with linseed oil or something like that. Even though you certainly may do that, you may never have a problem. I personally hesitate doing that and I recommend that you stick with what is working. I think that it's best practice to use a medium that's going to remain flexible through your painting layers, especially in the top layers. These quick drying mediums are not as flexible as you think they are. And if you're using them in a top layer as something as a retouch varnish, you run the risk of seeing some sort of cracking or delamination in the future. Like I just said, a popular oiling out recipe that I've heard many people use is a one part Gamsol, one part Galkid. And while this does sound appealing because you can apply it and it's rather quick drying, I'm very hesitant on this. Other mixtures people will use is something like linseed oil, one part linseed oil with a solvent as well. Again, Gamsol being a solvent that some people use or refined turpentine. Typically these mixtures are one part medium to one part solvent. Another thing that people will do, and this is a very interesting thought as well, is in lighter areas of a painting, such as the one behind me where the cat figurine is, some people would use walnut oil to oil out that area. Walnut oil typically dries a lighter color than linseed oil will. And while that is appealing, walnut oil doesn't create an oil paint layer as strong as linseed oil. So it's something to keep in mind. You might want to test it in a certain area. Walnut oil is a beautiful medium. The same goes with safflower oil as well. Safflower oil is not as yellowing as linseed oil, but is not as strong. And the same goes for poppy oil. And poppy oil can be very brittle. I know I'm throwing a lot of information at you, but I take this stuff very seriously. I want my paintings to last the test of time, but I also want them to look fresh 
and new and bright, just like the day I made them in my studio. So that is why I want to share this information with you so you can make your artwork as beautiful as you can and know that as it leaves your studio, it's not going to change. So with that said, join me down here real quick and I'm going to show you a few things on my table. For my oil painting mixture, I'm going to use linseed oil and distilled turpentine. I've used the linseed oil throughout the entire painting. So I know that this is not going to run the risk of creating some layer that might cause delamination in the painting. So I'm going to stick with linseed oil to oil out my painting. But I don't want to use just straight linseed oil in case there's any potential that could yellow over time. So I'm going to use some distilled turpentine. This is a very pure solvent and I feel confident in using it. And I'm going to use one part medium and one part solvent. There, we've made a very small amount of oil, which we will apply to our painting and uh, it should be beautiful and I'm excited. Let's get to work. Okay, I'm only going to be oiling out the area in which I'm going to be working. And we want to do this so there is not a layer of oil and only oil that is dry on the surface of the painting. I'm only going to work into the dark area of this painting during today's studio time that I have. So I have my mixture that I've made that's again one part linseed oil, one part turpentine. I'm going to apply it with this makeup wedge in a very even coat. No, notice it's not very thick, it's not dripping or anything like that. It's just going on in a very even glaze. I'm going to be careful not to get much on the cat just so i don't run the risk of anything causing discoloration in the future Okay, I've applied my layer of oil and it's very helpful. Now I'm seeing layers that need more work than I realized. There was a few areas where the value shift seemed kind of strange to me, but I couldn't quite tell what was going on with the paint. And now that I've applied oil to this, I can now see what I need to do to resolve the issues. One thing that I just did that a lot of other people may not do, but it's something that works for me, is I prefer to oil out my paintings when they are upright on an easel. That way I can see if something's applied too thickly because it will start to run or drip. If I lay my painting flat to do this, I have the tendency to apply too much medium and it will pool a little thicker in areas and I may not see what needs to be wiped off clearly enough. Right now, I can see that there is nothing that's really dripping, but I can definitely tell after a few moments if there's a problem. Either way, I'm going to let this sit for a couple minutes and let the oil sink in to a previous layer, and then I'm going to wipe as much off as possible. Now that I've let the oil sit on the surface and soak in, it's time for me to remove as much as I feel as possible before beginning to work into the painting.
Okay, I just went over the surface of the painting with a new makeup sponge to remove any excess oil that was still on the surface. And I feel like I have a really good, even, shiny coat now of very thin oil. And it's time for me to apply what will be the final coat of paint in the background of this painting. And I feel confident to adjust my values and color to finish this. Thank you all so much for watching my videos. I cannot express the amount of gratitude I have for all of you. It's been very exciting to watch this channel grow. So please stay tuned and let's see where we take it next. If you all like this video, please click the like button. It really helps the channel. I'm trying to grow this channel and provide much more helpful information like this to all of you artists out there. Also, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. There's going to be more videos like this in the future with more helpful information regarding galleries, studio practices, and exhibitions as well. So please stay tuned. Thank you for watching, everyone. I've got to go finish this painting right now while I can. Y'all get to work too. Happy painting.